I didn't know that guess what? Foster kids matter. And guess what guys? We want everybody to know that foster kids matter. Let's go. Alright man. So okay, in the Fayetteville, North Carolina tomorrow. We're gonna surprise the ladies and the kids a few things. So and then stay tuned. So guys, so we're currently on the road headed to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, got like a four and a half hour drive. Um, we're going to see uh, Sincere, the 18 year old young mother that aged out of foster care. Um, she actually, she knew it was coming, but I ended up telling the lady to tell her that we wasn't coming so that we could surprise her to make this a, a very, very uh, special uh, moment. Um, so you guys stay tuned, um, continue to support the movement. I'm excited uh, to be able to finally meet them. Um, so yeah, you guys stay tuned. All right, y'all, so finally in South Carolina, start to get some gas. So yeah, man, I'm excited. Uh, stay tuned. Last we made it to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, so we about to get situated, get dressed, and we're gonna head over um, to meet Sincere and her two children, and also um, uh, the baby daddy, uh, which her boyfriend um, of the expecting child and everybody so i'm excited i'm looking forward to this she actually don't know that we're coming it's gonna be a surprise um because we told her that it wasn't gonna come whatever but um you guys stay tuned hey guys all right so we finally made it to fayetteville north carolina um so we're gonna go ahead My heart is pounding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Watch. Hey. Not phone. Watch. Hey, hey, he's, he's like, she's like, that's a smart phone on the hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I had kids. So my aunt kept telling me that she would kill my baby and that my baby, I didn't deserve to get pregnant. I didn't deserve to have kids. And so. Then my grandma had kicked me out once I told her um, that her boyfriend was touching me and stuff. And then she was saying like it was my fault, that I wanted it. So my mom, who was supposed to be my mother, I thought we was going to have a good relationship after all these years. And she, and when we went to this hotel and then she told me that she didn't have, enough, she didn't have any more money. And then she got a lift because we were supposed to go to Walmart to pick up some money that her friend had gave her. And then she came in the car. And then she, we, I was in the car by myself with the baby. And my mom went to the store. And I, I was just, like, scared and, like, crying. But, like, silently crying because I didn't want my child to go through what I went through. So she was telling me, like, I'll, are you, she asked me, she said, are you homeless? And I just didn't, I couldn't say nothing because it was just like, I was scared. So then she asked me again and I sh shook my head, yes, and tears started rolling down my eyes. And then she said, I'm gonna take you home. And I said, what? She said, I'm gonna take you home. I said, I'm not, like, I'm not processing this. So my mom came back out the store and she said, um, you, you know, it's okay. We're going to take y'all home because my mom, I guess, couldn't get the money. So my mom was panicking and everything. And so when I walked in her house, there was all these kids lined up at the door. <laughs> and I was so scared. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then it was like they were so welcoming. And I didn't know how to feel. So I just felt loved instantly. And, like, within two days, I just, it felt like a dream, kind of, like, magical. And then she told me I could stay. And she told me I could stay. You put me in a hard spot in the, the DSS was there. They was like, she found. She found. We'll make room. We'll make room. 
make something happen. You gotta go ask him. The lady asked me, she said, I don't know well, his do you password. Go, go ask him. Do you wanna stay? Go ask him if he can open woman. it for you. And I said, please don't let me go back to my You want me to house. ask him? I was just begging her. No, I didn't even wanna him. go he'll to the building. It. If she would not never talk, came in there with me, I wouldn't have went. And I don't even know where I would have been, but I wouldn't have went. And I told them that I wanted to stay here. Then they so that they told me that I was able to stay here for like two months. I was I was perfect. Like it was like um they, all my old habits disappeared. Like I was filled with joy. All my anger had left. All my pain had left. I didn't even care that my mom left me here within two days of me staying here because I had a new mom and a new family. So I didn't care. And then on her birthday, um, I was in my room with the little baby, her, for the oldest baby now. And um, I was cleaning up or doing something and she came in my room and she just looked scared. And I'm like, mom, what's wrong? And she said, Miracle? I said, yes. She said, you gotta pack your bag. I said, why? She said, there's, they're, they're here to take you. And I was broken. I was scared. I was hurt. Because everything that I worked hard for, it was like, it was thrown out. And they brought my siblings, I guess, to try to make it better. Um, because they had removed them from my grandma's house. And my siblings are crying, and I'm trying to, like, stay strong. And then the cops were, like, telling me, like, I have to go, that there's no other choice, that I have to go. And all I could do was just break down and scream and cry because I, this woman has did so much. How could you take somebody from somebody for no reason? I don't understand that. And I was in a group home where it was just, they were very, very racist. And I was being called monkeys and niggers. And I should pick cotton field and all this crazy stuff. And so I left them there. And then my sister... Um, I stayed with her friends for a while and then I was just bouncing around everywhere and everywhere and everywhere and everywhere because I didn't want to risk them because they have a great mom and a good life. I would never want to jeopardize them.